Well, let's head outside the country now. We continue uh, our follow-up on the situation of Nigerians fleeing Sudan. And at this moment, it is not good news as they are stranded at the Sudanese border with Egypt. Quite a perilous journey it is turning out to be for them so far. Well, according to a statement by the chairman and CEO of Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Mrs. Abike Dabiri Erewa, over 7,000 nationals, including Nigerians, are not being allowed to cross the border into Egypt since their arrival late yesterday evening. And she's asking on those concerned with passages and movement of persons and services along uh, the borders of Sudan to create a humane condition uh, for Nigerians and other nationals to have unfettered access to their various destinations. And uh, this is the issue because she added that the Nigerian mission in Egypt has been working on this, but the Egyptian authorities are insisting on visas by fellow Africans to transit back to their countries. So she's appealing to the Egyptian authorities to kindly allow the already traumatized travelers to transit to their final destinations in various countries across the continent. So the government had initially said that the first batch of Nigerians will arrive the country today, Friday, but seeing that they're still stuck at that border, that doesn't appear uh, to be feasible at this point. And we've been in touch uh, with official sources uh, right there at, at the border. And yes, indeed, those Nigerians and other nationals are stuck, but the hope is that tomorrow morning, they'll be allowed to proceed to the airport. And, you know, sources within uh, NEMA and government sources say that, well, they have not abandoned the Nigerians there. And they say that Sudan is a war zone and um, Egypt being a foreign country, there's a limit to what uh, Nigeria or the Nigerian government can do. So uh, this is on the hands of Foreign Affairs uh, Ministry to ensure that these areas are smoothened so Nigerians who are stuck there can return home to their family. So that is the update we have uh, from there right now. But we have joining us uh, on the program uh, this evening, Abubakar Sadiq, who is live in Khartoum. We spoke with Abubakar yesterday. And Abubakar, I must say that it is good to see you again. And I know in spite of all that is happening, you're trying to remain in high spirits. We've tried to reach out to some of your colleagues who are stuck at the border, but we understand that the connection uh, has been very tricky. So it's very difficult to reach them. But I don't know if you've had some sort of communication with some of them. Uh, what can you tell us? Yeah. Earlier in the evening, we communicated with some of the stranded students at the border. But ten, nine, uh, right now, nine buses are at the uh, Arikin Land Port border, and the remaining four, four buses are at Wadi Halfa border. So they are not in the same place, also. For those that are at the Wadi Halfa border, uh, they were given a, a point, one contact to contact someone there at Wadi Halfa. So they have been contacted that they have been contacting that person and he is not responding to their call until now. Oh dear. Uh, just uh, quite sad the twists and turns uh, in this one. I mean we understand the situation in Sudan is a bit unpredictable. So let's talk about what is going on there right now. You are one of the people who have been left behind, at least for now, uh, the government says evacuation will resume. But we know that the ceasefire has been extended. But what was the day like after we spoke yesterday? How has the experience been uh, in terms of the ceasefire holding up? And you, of course, uh, with your daily upkeep. There is still violation of the ceasefire. So the truth is just on paper, but in reality, there is nothing like truth. As I speak to you, even today, in the evening, there was an airstrike and uh, airstrike from the military, and also the rapid support forces are, are defending themselves, or they are responding with the anti-aircraft missiles. So that's the situation, actually. There is no ceasefire until now. So if there is no ceasefire, would you be safe, or would you feel safe? Uh, or let me just say, how safe would you feel to be evacuated uh, in the midst of that ceasefire which you say is not holding? 
He said, well, I said, do you feel safe enough then to be evacuated amidst that ceasefire that you say is not holding? Do I feel safe to be ev evacuated or what? Yes, do you feel safe to be evacuated amidst, you know, those breaches of the ceasefire? Because it looks like things are unpredictable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's better to leave the, uh, this town, Khartoum, because the uh, situation is worsening day by day. So it's far better to move on because there is a lot of people. There are a lot of people that are going out of the country. Even the Sudanese, the indigenous of the country, they have left their home. Even our landlord, as I speak to you now, he is not in Khartoum. Right, Sadiq. So, so tell us then, what information do you have about uh, your possible evacuation? At least we know your colleagues are still stuck at the border. Uh, there's hope that by tomorrow morning uh, they'll be let through. But do you have any information as to when you may be evacuated by the Nigerian authorities? Precisely, there is no date. Because the information they shared with us uh, today, in the morning around 10 a.m. or 9. So uh, they asked us to exercise patience and wait for the for, uh, for the remaining complement uh, that they, uh, they told us the money the remaining money is not with them so they are waiting for the federal government to release the remaining money we were talking about just the, uh, the, the the money, the financial component, and I think that has been a major issue. I mean, we saw that video that was trending of one of the uh, Nigerian students saying that they were stopped right there in the middle of the desert, uh, and the driver said they were not going to move until they got uh, their full payment. So uh, what are you hearing regarding... Uh, the, the money spent for your transport. There's a certain message going around, such as being from the ministry or was it the embassy about how much they have. So what do you know really or what are you hearing regarding funding for your evacuation? From what we, from what we had today, uh, from the embassy, what we had today is that uh, the charging buses have been completely paid. So that's why they proceeded with the money. That, that, those $400,000 is for the touching bosses. And there is no money on the ground right now. They are waiting for the, they are waiting for the remaining money from the federal government to arrive to them, to come to them. Then they will continue the evacuation. That's the information they shared with us today. Right. I mean, while some have questioned even uh, the $1.2 million uh, that has been budgeted, said to be uh, earmarked for that evacuation. Uh, but still, if we are hearing that only $400,000 uh, has been given out. So that's still an outstanding, what, $800,000. Uh, what are the options for you at this point, uh, Sadiq? Yes. If, I mean, if what? God forbid the embassy does not come through, of which the government says they will come through. But what are the options for you? For me or for the remaining Nigerian students? Eh? Well, maybe for you and by extension, the remaining Nigerian students. By the way, I'm, I'm glad you, you can muster a smile. That's, that's good to see. Thank you. So, uh, uh, for so, Jiga State Students Association, they have been evacuated yesterday, and I think the state government paid the their, their fee. Jiga State and Borno State students also, they have been evacuated by their states. Right. We'll get back to you, uh, Abu Bakr Sadiq, but we ask that you stay safe and we wish you the very best. As always, if you have any information or if there's any need to escalate anything, please let us know. But we wish you the very best. Abu Bakr Sadiq is a Nigerian uh, who is still in Khartoum waiting uh, for the government to evacuate them uh, from the capital of Sudan amidst all of that conflict. Thank you so much for your time, Sadiq. Hello, sir.